So welcome to lesson 5 of our study of differential equations. So in lesson 5, we will talk about subsidiary conditions, okay? So what are subsidiary conditions? They are conditions or set of conditions on the differential equation that will allow us to determine which solution that we are after. So we have two types of subsidiary conditions. We have the initial value problem known as the IVP and we have the boundary value problem known as the BVP. So how do we differentiate between the two? What is an IVP and what is a BVP? So initial value problem. So initial value problem is the differential equation along with subsidiary conditions on the unknown function and its derivatives. And the key word here is that all given at the same value of the independent variable. So you can see that, example, we can have, let's say, a third order ODA, and we can have these conditions, y of 0 equals 2, y prime of 0 equals 4, y prime prime of 0 equals 7. You can see that they are all given at x equals 0. We have 0 here, 0 here, and 0 here. Even if we are, they will all be given at the same point. So that makes it an initial value problem, right? Mm -hmm. Then for the boundary value problem, the differential equation along with subsidiary conditions on the unknown function and its derivatives, which are given at more than one value of the independent variable. So more than what's one value, and it is mostly two. Okay, so you can see that here we have y of zero equals two and y prime of one equals, let's say, and y of one equals four, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see that here, it is given as when x is zero, and here when x is one. So you can see that x is zero here, x is one here. So you can see that it is what bounded. That's the reason we call it boundary value problem. Okay, all right. So that is the difference between the two. So note that if initial conditions is or are used to solve a differential equation, then the solution is called a particular solution. So you see so far we've been dealing with general solution, general solution. So how do we also get a particular solution? And we get a particular solution when we have the general solution and we have initial conditions attached to it. And we can use those initial conditions to what? Get a particular solution. So let's have examples on that. So y equals c1 e minus x plus c2 e3x is a general solution of this differential equation. So the question says you have to determine a particular solution of the initial conditions y equals 3 when x is 0 and y prime equals 4 when x is 0. So this is the same as y of 0 equals 3, y prime of 0 equals what? 4. So solution. This is our differential equation, this is our general solution, and these are conditions. So we now have to solve for the particular solution using the initial conditions, right? So we come to our general solution. The general solution is y equals c1 e minus x plus c2 e3x. Actually, what you are doing is you are trying to solve for what c1 is and what c2 is based on the initial conditions which were given. So the first one is y of 0 equals 3. So we put that inside this. So um, y is 3 and x is 0. So then wherever we find y, we put 3 there. Wherever we find x, we put 0 there. So we get 3 will be equal to c1 e power negative 0 plus c2 e3 times 0. And you know any power is the power 0 is what? 0. Uh, it's one, sorry. Any um, number raised to the power zero is one, except zero. Okay, so um, this will give us three will be equal to C1 plus C2. And we call this equation one. 
Then you see the second initial condition given is y prime of 0 equals 4. So that means that from the general solution, we have to find y prime, take the first derivative, and that will give us minus c1 e minus s plus 3c2 e3x. Before we put in the condition, so wherever you find y prime, we put 4 there. Where you find x, we put 0 there. And that gives us this. And in number raised to the power 0, except 0 is what 1. So we get the second equation, which is 4 equals minus c1 plus 3c2. We call that equation 2. So now we have two equations. So we can solve them simultaneously for the values of c1 and c2. So doing that will give us c1 to be 5 over 4. So you solve this equation simultaneously. And you get c2 to be 7 over 4. And hence, you know, the general solution was this. But for the particular solution, we get y will be equal to, so where you find c1, we put 5 over 4 there. So 5 over 4 e minus s plus 7 over 4 e 3 x, okay? So let's solve a second example. So this one was an initial value problem because you can see that they were all given at s took 0, right? But this one will be a boundary value problem because you can see that here we have y pi over 8 and y pi over 6. You can see different points of what x. So the question says we should find a solution to the boundary value problem y prime prime plus 4y equals 0. And we have these conditions, right? So y pi over 8 equals 0 and y pi over 6 equals 1. And the general solution is this. So solution. This is the general solution, right? So at the first condition, when y pi of 8 equals 0, what this means is that x is equal to pi on 8 and y is 0. And we just change the argument, which is in radians to degrees. And so pi over 8, right, will give us 22.5 degrees. I hope you know how to do the conversion, right? So pi rad is equal to 180 degrees. So to get pi over 8 rad, we don't know, so we can represent it by x. I hope you get it. Uh -huh. So we can do cross multiplication, right? Then we will get x pi will be equal to 180 times pi on what 8. So we'll get 180 over 8, right? Because pi will cancel pi. So x will be equal to 180 over 8. And 180 over 8 will give us the 22.5. So that's how we do the conversion, OK? So that means wherever you find y, you put 0 there. Wherever you find x, we put 22.5 there. So we get 0 will be equal to c1 sine 2 times 22.5 plus c2 cos 2 times 22.5. And we get 0 will be equal to c1 sine 45 degrees plus c2 cos 45 degrees, right? Because 2 times 22.5 is 45. Then we get 0 will be equal to c1 sine 45 is root 2 on 2 plus c2 cos 45 is also root 2 on 2. And this is equation 1. Then with the second boundary condition which was given is false y pi on 6 equals 1. All right. So with that one, so you change the pi on 6 rad to degrees, and that will give you 30 degrees. You can do the conversion. So when you make substitution, that means wherever you find y, you put 1 there. Wherever you find x, you put 30 degrees there. So you get 1 will be equal to c1 sine 2 times 30 plus c2 cos 2 times 30. And this will give us 1 will be equal to c1 sine 2 times 30 is 60. Then plus c2 cos what? 60. 
then sine 60 is root 3 on 2 so we get 1 will be equal to root 3 on 2 c1 then cos 60 is half so plus 1 over 2 c2 and this equation 2 so now we have two equations all right so we solve this equation simultaneously for the values of c1 and c2 and when you solve it you get c1 to be 1 over 1 plus root 3 and c2 to be minus into bracket 1 plus root 3 which is the same as minus 1 minus root 3 so you know this was the general solution given so to find a particular solution you just substitute the values for c1 and c2 in today c1 this c2 and you can end there or you can go further to make some simplifications and the rest and you get this to be the solution or that to be the solution okay all right so this is it it's not that difficult okay so if you didn't understand anything you can always go back and rewatch the video and trust me the understanding will come okay so in our next lesson that's lesson six right this was lesson five and so lesson six so this is lesson six we will talk about ordinary differential equations that's od of the first kind okay so thank you very much and see you in the next video